on the agenda. Do we have any announcements, Matt? Um, really quick, I have a maintenance notification letter from the BSC group for tower maintenance for um, New England Power, National Grid. Um, it's a routine letter. When they do routine maintenance, they notify the CONCOMs um, because under their exemptions from the state memorandum of understanding, they're required to. So usually I just go over the, I know, I know these people over at BSC have been dealing with them for a long time, usually pretty thorough. In fact, they're coming into us for the next meeting for um, some geotechnical boring testing. Okay. So there's an NOI out for that. If you guys want to preview it, I can, I can email you a PDF. Could you please? Or have it Absolutely. on the website? Absolutely. Hi, is Lawrence there? Yeah. The minutes for 310-22 and 414-22, I did not get a chance to review those. So I'm not going to, um, we'll table those till the next meeting. All right. So we'll do 310 is no action. The same thing with 414? Yeah, I didn't, I've been straight out. I don't want to vote on something I haven't read. No worries. All uh, right, next at 6.05 is a notice of intent for applicant David Anderson, 5 Menominac Road East, for repair of a small section of retaining wall. Do we have a reading for that that we can put up? You mean a legal ad? Yeah, we have to read the uh, announcement. Yeah, I can. Let me just put it up for you. I think I could find it in the paperwork we originally had. Actually, I can I'll, I can put it up on the screen here for you. Yes, I love that. I'll read them since Dave's not here. Do you want me to read them? Oh, I'll read it. Okay. <clears throat> Pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40 in the Town of Winchin and Wetlands Protection Bylaw, the Winchin and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 12, 2022, at 6.05 p.m. to consider the notice of intent filed by David Anderson, owner of 5 Menominac Road East, assessor's map M11, parcel 7. The proposed work includes replacing of an, of an existing 500 square foot section of wall within the 100 foot buffer zone. The hearing will be held in the second floor auditorium, Town Hall, 109 Front Street, Winchin of Massachusetts, 01475. Alternative translation and accommodation for disabled persons is available by advance requests. We have a representative for this hearing here tonight. This would be for. Did you get any word on whether they were coming, Matt? David, well, they should be here. They were notified. You want to put it back? Uh, Lynn? Hold on a second. I'm going to unmute you. Okay, you can unmute yourself. There you go. Okay, here we go. We're here. Okay, so they're on Zoom. They are currently quarantined with COVID. Okay. Hello. Good evening. So this is Five Menominac. Did you want to go over your project? We can try to fix that audio, Matt. Yeah. If you hear. <coughs> 
I have it as, as loud as I can get it. I'll, I just I'll, can't get it through the JBLs or something? Um, that's what I was just about to ask in, inside. But um, actually, I could put my mic down. Okay, so Mr. Anderson, you're doing a wall that's three and a half feet high, correct? Correct. And the length is not changing, correct? The length is not changing, the height's not changing. Okay. So essentially what we have is the determination of applicability for a wall that's not in the water. Um, right, none of it's in the water. It's a small section. He's included photographs of his entire site so the commission could orient themselves if they didn't have a chance to site visit. Um, my recommendation would be for negative number three. This was, a, this was an NOI, not a determination. Was it, was it, did he file an NOI? Yep. You're right, he filed an NOI. All right, and I even have a note. Okay. So my recommendation would be at this point that we grant him a standard order of conditions with the condition that we wait for the DEP number to come in. Um, we have a bunch of them that have no DEP numbers yet, and DEP's been a little bit behind. All right. But in this case, I don't see any outstanding issues that's going to trigger a DEP review. There's no um, rare species issues or any floodplain issues or anything like that. It's a like-for-like -like replacement. Yeah, that's a one-for-one -one replacement. We just need the erosion controls on the standard order conditions. If um, someone would like to, well, any questions from the board? No, it's pretty straightforward. No, I, no, I went out and looked at it, and uh, it's, it's the same spot where we allowed them to cut the tree, but yep. before we cut the big pine tree, the branches came down and broke the, the <laughs> wall. So I didn't find any problems with it. Okay. I'll entertain a motion if someone would like to make a motion for favorable order of conditions. I make a motion for favorable I'll conditions. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. All right, so Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, you've been approved with the condition that we're waiting for the DEP number. But in the meantime, if you could contact me so we can make arrangements to meet out on site after you're done your COVID quarantine, um, I can show you where to put the erosion protection that the commission's gonna need. We are, out, we are already out beyond that COVID. Okay, then. Yeah, we're 14 days out, we're okay. okay. Good, then shoot me another email tomorrow and um, we'll make arrangements for a date next week. All right, that sounds good. Excellent, thank you. Thank Is any you. day good for you, better for you? Um, just let me know what your convenience is and I'll adjust my schedule accordingly. All right. Tuesday, I know that you're usually in town now on Tuesday. Is so that we're going to be busy on Tuesday. Oh, you're right. But, all right, well, I'll shoot you an email on, on some options and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, next on the agenda is a request for determination of applicability for John Davies, 226 Menominee Road East, removal of eight trees within a 100-foot buffer zone. Do you want to read the, uh, the legal? Yep. Pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Town of Winchin and Wetlands Protection Bylaw, the Winchin and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 12, 2022, at 6 10 p.m. to consider the request for determination of applicability filed by owner John Davies for proposed work within the 100 foot buffer zone located at 226 Menominee Road East, Assessor's Map M4, Parcel 8. The proposed work includes the removal of two diseased trees plus six pine trees closest to the lake. The hearing will be held in the second floor auditorium in Town Hall, 109 Front Street, Winchin, Massachusetts, 01475. Alternative translation and accommodation for disabled persons available by advance request. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there a representative for this hearing here tonight? No. This is the Davies, correct? Right. Okay, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Davies, you are free to unmute. Okay. Hello? Can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, uh, so just explain what the, we're, we're trying to do. Please. Okay, so there are, um, there are eight trees total uh, within uh, like 50 feet of the water. 
Um, there are two two trees that we we designated. We we sent a, a video present or a PowerPoint presentation that was seven and eight. Those are directly in front of our house. Both of those are very diseased. One's a birch, one's a maple. Um, they need to come down. They're actually they're actually having limbs fall off. Uh, along the edge of 216 in our cells, um, the Benoins, uh, there are six pine trees we would like to have removed. Uh, the first one that's closest to the water is a very big pine that is leaning over the water and it continues to lean more and more. Eventually it's going to come down and probably fall into the lake. Um, there are the next uh, three pine trees have, one of them has a a very uh, big lightning strike that goes probably about two thirds of the way from the top to the bottom. Uh, the second one is a small one, but it's very diseased. And then the third one has a, um, a very big diseased um, section down low. That tree leans over towards 216. Um, and if it fell with damaged property, um, uh, he has a small cottage there that would probably hit that. Um, there, the other next two trees are also pine trees, um, these are also leaning towards 216. Uh, kind of the same situation. And they're both very mounded up the way that the uh, landscaping is. And so, and you know, we, we talked with Jacoby Tree Services and they recommended as well to have those two taken out at the same time. I have an actual um, ortho photo of the lot up. It's right in the center of the screen. Have you been out to look at this, Matt? Yeah, I did have a look at it. I did verify their claims about the trees being damaged and dead. Um, they are going to have to, under our bylaw, replant. Okay. So what I recommend, if the commission grants a negative determination, it would be contingent upon me going down and pointing out where they would need to replant. I can work it out with them to make sure that we continue to make sure that the wildlife and shade value for the lake is kept intact. Any questions or comments from the board? No. Fine with that, but you would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion for a negative determination. A with second. conditions. Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Chair votes aye. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Davies? Yep. You're all set. Um, we are gonna have to get together next week to talk about you know replanting some of the trees that you've taken down. That um, good. That's required under our bylaw, and if you also could do like the previous applicant did, and shoot me an email tomorrow, we can make a time next week where I can go see you. Okay, I will do that. We appreciate that. All right, thank you very, very much. All right, thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. Okay, so those were our only residents that needed to do Zoom, so I'm, I terminated the Zoom portion of that. That Zoom information was put out publicly. I think we need to leave the Zoom call on, right? In case people, the public wants to Zoom in. Um, I only gave a link to those two residents. Okay. We didn't publish it. It was to accommodate the residents. Okay. I, in the future, if you want, I can do it hybrid and set up like the other computer so we can do both, you know, we can, I can alternate. Okay. And um, I can <clears throat> publish a Zoom link. That's not a problem. All right, thank you. Next on the agenda is the Winchelman School, Assessor's Map 5C3, parcel 177 for replacement of turf. I hope you don't mind me just switching console. Oh, great. Right here? Yes, and please say your names into the microphone for the record. Sure. There should be a sign-in sheet there as well. You can sign. Just a couple things before we begin the hearing, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to let the commission know we're still waiting for a DEP number. Um, like I said, DEP has been pretty much backlogged. They've got new personnel starting and a couple out on leave. So they're working through it as fast as they can. Um, I would also like to uh, thank the applicant for being so responsive to any of my inquiries or requests for information. They were pretty much like lightning with a response. Every time I'd send an email, I get something within a half an hour. So. Okay. Could you state your name into the mic, please? Ken Costello, SMRT Architects, 
uh, an engineer and over math. Thank you. And I'm John Kearney from the Winchenden School. Okay, pursuant to provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Town of Winchin and Wetlands Protection Bylaw, the Winchin Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 12, 2022, at 6.05 p.m. to consider the notice of intent filed by the Winchin School for proposed work within the 100-foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands, 172 Ash Street, Assessor's Map M5C3-0, Lot 177. The proposed work includes the replacing of turf on a soccer and baseball field with artificial turf with an underdrain system. The hearing will be held on the second floor auditorium at Town Hall, 109 Front Street, Winchester, Massachusetts, 01475. Alternative translation and accommodation for disabled persons is available by request. Okay, Matt. So just in the interest of um, disclosure, um, I did follow disclosure with the uh, town administrator who was allowing me to, of course, continue to participate. But as the, you know, members of the commission know, uh, I'm also an environmental consultant and I work here part-time and I do environmental consulting with the rest of my time. Prior to me being hired by the town, I was retained by the Winchenden School to reflag the wetlands around there um, because John Walker wasn't available at the time. Um, my flagging on site matched Mr. Walker's previous flaggings that have appeared in front of this commission pretty much exactly. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, the project here is for, uh, it's artificial turf with an underdrain system. Um, I have asked the town and we are in the process of having the underdrain system and the stormwater reviewed by our reviewer, Ty and Bond. So that was the biggest part that I wanted reviewed was the, the stormwater. That's the real key to the underdrain system and the turf that's being laid on this field. And that hasn't been done yet? They're not complete yet, no. Okay. Hi, can you explain your project? <clears throat> Sorry? Can you explain the project? Sure. Um, well, I guess we can look up there. Um, the project, the project We have it right here in front of us. Yeah. Oh, you got it right in front of us? Yeah. So the project, project is to replace the soccer field, the, the south field just south of the uh, hockey rink um, with synthetic turf. That was uh, designed and built and constructed and permitted back in 2012. Um, and then it's all, the, the project is also to replace the baseball field with synthetic turf. Um, the soccer field would be replaced in its exact same location, actually within the fence lines that are out there right now. So there's no uh, disturbance beyond the fence lines, the existing fence lines. Uh, the baseball field is proposed to be rotated um, 90 degrees clockwise so that the uh, home plate will be at the north end of that field which will allow us to get a um, better regulated distance on the field. Uh, we're trying to meet National Federation of High School Sports regulations for distances for the field. Um, as uh, Matt mentioned, it is under drain. It's a typical construction design for synthetic fields. So you have a synthetic turf, you have a stone layer, and you have a flat panel drain on the bottom of that system. Um, the soccer field is actually under drain, has perimeter drains around it now. We will be tying into that existing system on the soccer field, and which discharges to a uh, stormwater pond south of the parking lot there. Um, so we're just basically intercepting that pipe and discharging the same location. For the baseball field, we have two locations, two discharge locations in the northeast corner, um, two level lip spreaders, basically pipes collecting all the under drains and then with level spreaders right um, in the upland area and it, they drain into the wetland. Okay, thank you. Yep. Matt, do you have any more information? This is a new one for me. <clears throat> so, I, I mean, essentially I <clears throat> asked the applicant to fill out the waiver request form, yep. which they did because it does require waiver because the wetlands essentially go right, I mean, right next to both fields. You can see the isolated wetland on the ortho photo. You also notice on the screen there's a little like blue dot in the center of that isolated wetland, which actually it looks isolated here. It's actually kind of connected to the other wetland systems by culverts and pipes. So it's marked as a potential vernal pool. However, the limits of the vernal pool would be um, within the limits of the wetland, so it would not expand the buffer zones out at all. 
They're not proposing any work within the wetlands, but they are proposing work right next to the wetlands. Um, it's basically like for like replacement on dimension. There's no expansion. Again, the biggest part here is going to be the stormwater controls and the underdrain controls. So once we have the final review in by tie and bond, um, I think we'd be good to go. I mean, at this point, we, we really shouldn't approve it because we don't have DEP input yet, mm -hmm. although right. they are reviewing it. So. so you're not looking for any expansion, just replacing the natural with artificial? Yeah, the, we basically stayed within the, the limits of disturbance. We have about 800 square feet of disturbance on just the edges of the baseball field um, where some of the plants have grown in from previous, you know, just over time. Um, so there's a little bit of 800 square feet. We are adding approximately 700 square feet of impervious, which is two pads for some benches. And, um, and the, the synthetic turf dug out, I mean, a pitching mound that we're putting in actually has a concrete slab under it. So there's no under drains under that. So it's technically impervious. But again, it's about 700 square feet of impervious. And you're keeping that wetland by tip, uh, currently third base? I mean, yes. there's no disturbance there? Yeah, we're not doing anything in that area except working around in the buffer zone on the outside. Again, we're not disturbing any wetland, flag wetland areas, just the, just the existing disturbed buffer zones. So it looks like, provided the tie and bond comes back favorable, all we need to do is condition the work. That's correct. And their waiver request form does um, meet the standards of our bylaw for the granting of a waiver. So I, it's, it should be in the folder there because I printed it out this morning and put it in. Okay. But I did review the waiver request and they did a nice job stating their case. So. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? Lina? Do we have to wait for tie and bond? I think we, we do, yeah. We, we really should, yes. So we should continue? We should continue, yes. Continue. Okay. Six I think eight. they should be all set by the next meeting. We can't approve you anyway because you do not have a DEP number. And we need to wait to see if DEP has any comments as well that may need to be addressed. Can I, may I speak or not? Is that appropriate? Go ahead. Go ahead. It's up to the chair. So we have, um, we have a little bit of a timing dilemma that if we don't start the soccer field this year, we won't get it done this year. Um, so the next hearing is not until mid-June, correct? We have, we have a start date and a financing date on that on June 1. If you need special accommodations, we've done that in the past. We can have a contingent on the board's answer. We could have a quick meeting just to vote on that. And that'll be all that's on the agenda. We've done that numerous times when, the, when people are facing losing grants or hard deadlines. So honestly, I don't have an issue with it because the, 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 the under drain system is a pretty complex system. It's not going to be something that's going to be hammered out like in two days. So if they do need to get some work started, um, I can work with them to make sure that their proposed erosion protection is up. I'm assuming that that tie and bond isn't going to find an issue, but um, I'm always very cautious when it comes to um, artificial turf fields. I've seen a few of them go wrong. Um, this one was well designed, but again, the stormwater, I wanted to make sure it was okay. But I'm more than willing to work with them if the commission, if it's the commission's will. So we can make a motion to approve based on the, uh, or contingent on the favorable review from time bond, and the DEP number. Yeah, we can do that. That way, as soon as they get their DEP number, and they can begin work. And yeah, absolutely. The time bond if that's what you want to do, that's fine. We appreciate that very, very much. So when you get ready to start mobilizing your crew, you need to contact me so I can meet you on site and go over the work. Do you have a sense of when tie and bond might be able to, or how long the DEP or tie and bond might take? DEP is a total wild card. You just never know. They could have it tomorrow. It could take them three more weeks. We, we don't know. They're overworked and they're overbooked. Right. They've okay. been pretty good about the small stuff, but yours is a larger project. Okay. So Will they, they want to do a site inspection or? Review. Excuse me? Does DEP do a site inspection? They won't do a site inspection unless there's an appeal or if they decide to intervene. So you don't want them out there because that means they're intervening and they're going to tell you what to do. Great. So we'll avoid that. But we do need a motion, a second, and a vote. I'll make a second. I'll make a motion to approve what you just said. Okay, the motion is to approve it contingent on the Time bond report come back favorably and the DEP number being in hand before work starts. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? 
Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. So give me a shout next week. Yeah. Just call me next Tuesday and, okay. and we'll talk. Yep. Okay. No problem. Yeah, we already have Beautiful. We'll talk. Next on the agenda is an NOI filed by Catherine Rupp. 233 Mill Glen Road, replacing a damaged culvert, grading, and paving driveway area. Thank you. Have a good night. this get this out of the, the reading pursuant to the provisions of master law chapter 131 section 40 of town of Winston wetlands protection by law the Winston conservation commission will hold a public hearing on thursday may 12 2022 at 6 10 p.m to consider the notice of intent filed by Catherine rupp for proposed work within the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands at 233 mill Glen road assessors map m13-0 lot 84 the proposed work includes the replacing of a damaged culvert and grading and paving of a driveway area the hearing will be held on the second floor auditorium of Town Hall, 109 Front Street, Winston, Massachusetts, 01475. Alternative translation and accommodation for disabled persons is available by advance request. Welcome. Um, so basically, the, it's a pretty uh, simple. The driveway and culvert have been there since 1980 when the house was built. Um, the culvert pipe, um, not sure how it got damaged. It might have been, you know, maybe a truck coming in to drop a bomb or something, but it damaged the pipe, hole was creating, and we were having debris and stuff dropping down inside the pipe. So the pipe runs along Mill Glen Road um, under, the, under the, uh, the driveway, that dirt driveway there. And uh, so we decided we're gonna change, we're gonna replace it. So we contacted a uh, contractor and um, they, uh, According to the, uh, the form that you have online, they picked up a, a pipe that's, uh, that meets the requirement on the, uh, the DPW form. And then uh, while we were there, we said, oh, we might as well have the driveway paved too. So the driveway is uh, 18 uh, wide by 62 uh, long. It's about 30 feet away from the wetland area. Um, and then replacing that pipe uh, parallel to the Mill Glen Road is part of the job. Uh, and it's just gonna be asphalt. They're gonna they come in and put the under, whatever the gravel or whatever they do underneath and then um, four inches of, uh, four or five inches of asphalt on top. So that's pretty hard packed right now, right? From being driven on? It is until it rains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I actually went out there, this, this one I had to, couldn't get to until this morning. So I was out there and took a look at it. So you've got over here, you've got a, a, a pretty good sized wetland system right here. You can see it's pretty shaded. It comes out and it comes around, goes under the culvert that's in the driveway right here and then goes out to, uh, basically it's a jurisdictional swale because it's draining from the wetland. And then it goes out and goes across to another wetland. So my only question on that was based on your diagram, you're only proposing to replace the culvert, correct? Correct. Because it looks from your diagram almost like you were going to dig out this section here and this section here, and you really can't do that. No. Um, no. It could lead, the, the way your diagram is, so if you could just amend your diagram and send it to me like, you know, next week, you know, like Monday. Okay, that, yeah, that and was just, just to point, show just point to them and say no work no work proposed okay because i have to send that to dep and they're going to see that and they're going to say well it, it looks like they're actually going to dig out the stream because that's the first thing they'll assume because that's what they oh, no, that, i was just trying to show the where the water flowed from the i kind of figured pond. that but i wanted to make absolutely yeah. sure so okay. let's make it clear on the document yeah i can change it, just like it. yeah I mean, he actually for a stick and block document he actually did a pretty good job outlining where everything was and I was able to take that document stand in front of his house and actually look at it and figure out where everything was very easily so 
My only concern would be if he says it's not hard packed when it rains, it's pervious, it's creating all that impervious surface. Where's that runoff going to go? Who's going to engineer that correctly so that it doesn't all go into the wetland? Are you talking what, the, the culvert or? No, it's going to pave the driveway. Are you planning on paving the driveway? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Four inches of asphalt. So it's going to run over into that tree area. So that's my biggest concern is the impervious surface creation right next to the wetland and how to control that runoff. So, if you don't mind, if we could continue this, I'll go out and take some measurements in the driveway and try to calculate pre and post development on that myself because it's a small enough area I should be able to do it. What's your time frame like? When did you want to start work? I was hoping, this has been going on since last October, so I was hoping to get it done very soon. But like, I was hoping this would just start next week if possible, but if that's not possible, then. I think, I think if it's crowned properly um, and splits the water, um, I don't know, if some of it's going to go directly into that weather. That's why I was hoping you were going to say it was impervious, but you said it's not when it rains because I was hoping it was hard enough packed that it wouldn't be much different than hard asphalt because it's been driven on so long. But In that small of an area, I think if he takes that driveway and just has it, you know, just a very slight grade so that it drains towards the front lawn, yep. the front lawn will filter it out. It'll head into the this particular swale that serves as a buffer yep. from wetland to wetland. Mm -hmm. And that actually makes a good, it almost has the effect of having like a rain garden, like a right. bio swale. Yeah. So that should mitigate it. Do you understand that? So you want the contractor to slope? So and in other words, you see your driveway right here? You want it to, you want it to run away from the wetland, basically. You want it to run away from this area and run towards your lawn so that it comes out here. Yep. It's not going to be like a huge volume of water that's going to flood out your yard. But by the same token, you've got this really nice swell right here that, as, as our resident engineer, Mr. Grazowitz, will tell you, he often designs for bioswales, for light impact development, for stormwater control. And you've got one built right in, right in your front yard. Yep. So I think we should make use of it. All right, I, I did actually talk to the, uh, the contractor about um, making sure the water, because he did say, yeah, we can slope it. I said, yeah, we don't want anything going in the wetlands. And it, it, uh, it doesn't have to be very pronounced. It can be pretty. No, I, 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 yeah, well. I, I agree. Um, everything flows that way naturally anyway, so away from the wetland. I would agree with that um, statement. So yeah, we can make that happen. You're fine with that? Yeah. I'd rather it be that way anyway. I mean, it's just get everything going you know, in the right direction right off the bat. So, yeah. Questions or comments from the board? No, I'm glad. I was concerned with the driveway as well. I answered that question. Mono? No. no. Good. No okay, so we're looking for a favorable order of conditions with the conditions of the sloping we discussed. Make well, a motion. This, is a, this, this one is. NOI? Okay, yep, it's an NOI. So, yeah, standard order of conditions with the condition for the slope driveway. I make a motion that we approve and the uh, standard sloping and conditions. I second. Um, before we go, does the DEP number in hand? It hasn't been issued yet, so we'll have to wait for them to. So then we'll like have I said, they've been very slow. We'll have to continue this one until we get a DEP we'll number. Just make it contingent on receiving the number before work starts. Right. Okay. I honestly don't think DEP is going to have a huge issue with this either. So if you could amend your motion just to include the DEP number. Uh, also to include the DEP number before the Second. work starts. How, how, does that, how does that come out? I mean, I sent that. That's the Worcester place? That's correct. Yeah. And we sent that to them like months ago. I mean, how long does it really take to get one? They're behind. They have a lot of work. You'd, you'd be surprised. But what I will, you know, I usually when I get like, the ones I've got tonight, I just start calling the office, kind of like a bill collector. Am I supposed to do that, or is that something? Let you me do? take care of it. Okay. I'll, I can. I can usually get them to move faster. Okay. Appreciate it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Well, we can't do anything until we get that. 
So do you tell me when I can do it, or do I keep calling you guys to find out, or how does this work? Well, they gave you approval for it conditioned upon the issuance of a DEP number. So let's go over what your, actually your paving contractor should probably contact me to talk about a schedule. Both okay. you and your paving contractor. And if you want to meet out at, at, the dri you know, at your driveway, we can talk about it there. All right, I'll have to call him tomorrow. I, I, I honestly assume this would just be ready to go and they were gonna start the job next week, so. Unfortunately, we have no control over DEP and that's just I a rule. It. It's a rule we can't violate, so. All right, um, all right, just email you, is that? Yeah, that's fine. That work, okay. <clears throat> all right, thank you. Thank you, have a good night. Okay, next on the agenda is an RDA request for determination of applicability for Daniel and Erica. No last name provided. That'll be in the reading, hopefully. Pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Winston Wetlands Protection Bylaw, the Winston Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 12, 2022, at 6:25 p.m. to consider the request for determination of applicability filed by Daniel and Erica Andres for proposed work in the for proposed work to be outside the 50-foot boarding vegetated wetland buffer zone at 14 Hale Street, Assessor's Map 4C4, Parcel 56. The proposed work will be the removal of an existing deck, construction of a three-season porch. The hearing will be held at the second floor auditorium at Lynchington Town Hall, 109 Front Street. Howdy, uh, Chris Stoddard, Stoddard Engineering. Um, we have a, it's a fairly simple, do you want, can you, Matt, can you bring it up on the, do you have the electronic version? Just so they can see. Yeah, I mean, um, let me just give the aerial here. This is 14 Hill. Correct, yep. If I could spell today, I'd be more than happy to bring it up. This, yeah, I got it in a small size. You know how it goes. Fat fingers, little keyboard. So this is the subject property right here. Yeah, correct. Um, so basically the project here is everything we're doing is staying outside the 50 foot buffer zone. Um, you can see the deck just to the south um, with the set of stairs. That's going to be removed. And then we're proposing to put a um, three-season porch up on sauna tubes um, along that side and then back along the back um, a little bit. It's, like I said, everything's within the 50-foot buffer zone. It's all existing um, lawn, pretty much all the way right up to the wetland area. Um, small backhoe just to dig a... Eight, ten sauna tubes in there, and then backfill and then get the heck out of there. Um, we're proposing silt fence and erosion control around the whole entire project. Um, other than that, it's a fairly simple project, I think. So what you've got is is a flat sloped area. It's flat, and you've got a wetland system that's pretty pronounced. Um, you've got an, all the work is taking place outside of the 50-foot zone in a previously developed lot. That's what you've got here. So you're increasing the size of the deck? I mean, of the, uh, the, the three yeah. seats, of course, be bigger than the deck? Yeah, so the deck is being removed, and um, we're proposing a 22 by 10 addition um, screened-in porch, or a three-season porch, excuse me. What size is the deck currently? Uh, 10 by 10, I believe it is. Eight by ten, I think, actually. Yeah, ten by ten with the set of stairs. So basically doubling the size of it? Basically, yeah, doubling the size. So, Matt, um, the 100 foot no build, we're increasing this, uh, this we're putting we're increasing in, the nonconformity. Yeah, so, and it's uh, also uh, impervious because it's going to have a roof. Whereas the deck is not, the deck can mm -hmm. absorb rain. So, um, what do you think in replication zone? 
I'm sorry, I, I'm, I didn't hear you on that. So what do you think, in replication zone? Do you think that's a good idea in this case? You mean like a, uh, a planting zone? Yeah. Yeah, I, actually that, that, would, that would actually work in that area. There's some areas out in the back where we can enhance. So if you want to continue, I can go out on site and uh, you know, we can come up with uh, you know, a planting scheme. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I don't think they mow it, so I don't really, I don't think they use it that much. So to creep in some plantings wouldn't really affect them negatively. So what we'll do is we'd have it put on the plans and then I'd have the applicant, you know, I'd have the applicant write a narrative so that we have everything out there. And then you're gonna have to, we just started using a waiver request form. So you'd have to fill that out too. It's pretty, that's pretty good. Nice. Yeah. We can do some native plantings in that area. Questions or comments? No, uh, that was my concern with the roof and the stands. We think Juana? Fine. Any concerns? Replant along there. So I think we need to gain at least as much as we're taking in a, in a native species replication zone somewhere on the property. Mm -hmm. Just because we are in the 100 foot no build. I know it's 50 foot no touch, but in our town it's 50 foot no touch, 100 foot no build. Or 75 foot no build, 100 foot jurisdictional. So. All right, so you want to look at that, Matt? You want to put it on the agenda for the next meeting? Yep, I'm making notes on that right now. Okay, what's the date of the next meeting? Uh, hold on a second. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> 10th? Uh, June 9th. 6 9 at 6 05. Can I get a motion to continue till June 9th at 6 05 p.m.? I make a motion to continue till June 9th, 22. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you. Thank you. Matt, I'll shoot you. Uh... Beautiful. Something here. Next on the agenda is a request for determination of applic applicability. Applicant Paul Graswitz, 265 Menominee Road West. Pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Winchenden Wetlands Protection Bylaw, the Winchenden Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 12, 2022, at 6:30 p.m. to consider the request for determination of applicability filed by Engineer Paul Graswitz for proposed work located in. At 265 Menominee Road West, Assessor's Map M6, Parcel 35. The proposed work will be for replacement of a septic system within 100 feet of the buffer zone and to be 10 feet further away from the lake than current system. The hearing will be held in the second floor auditorium of the Winchester Town Hall, 109 Front Street. Alternative translate, translation and accommodation for disabled persons is available by advance request. Say your name, please, even though we all know you. Could you say your name into the mic, please? Pardon me? Your name? Paul Grazowitz, Graz Engineering. Welcome, Paul. For uh, Vincent Cass. Um, I've got a couple more large plans if anyone needs one up there. Um, you can put it on the screen, Matt, please. <clears throat> it's 265, correct? There you go. If the commission notices the green hash across the wetland, that's a floodplain. There's no floodplain on the subject property, but there is across the street. Okay. Thank you. So we're proposing a septic upgrade. Basically, we had the 
We couldn't get out of our own 100 foot well radius, so we've got the system uh, as far away from our well as we can. And, uh, you know, we're still well beyond the, the 50 foot. Um, 50-foot offset from the wetlands. Uh, we're proposing erosion controls, and uh, he's going to have to regrade his driveway there because the septic's kind of fouling up that corner of the lot. But that's the best we can do there. Has this failed Title Five? Yeah, it's a Title Five upgrade. All right. Standard septic repair a replacement. There's already one existing, so. Yeah, I actually thought he did a good job squeezing everything in as, as best he could and yeah. maximizing its location. So I don't actually have a problem with the negative determination on this. He's actually improving the groundwater situation. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the board or comments? Does he need a DEP number? No, this no? one's a determination. Okay. Questions or comments? Can we get a request for negative determination? I mean a motion, I'm sorry. I make a motion to approve. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thanks, Paul. Want your plans back? Um, no, just keep it for your file. You want this one back? Yeah, no, no. You gotta keep one of them. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we gotta submit it before. Oh, I'll see you again. That one right here already. You want this one back? Paul, are you doing the next one too? What's that? Are you doing the next one too? Trying to remember what number for Wall Street. Next on the agenda is Asher Construction LLC and NOI, a notice of intent for Lot 1 Doyle Avenue. Pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Town of Winchin and Wetlands Protection Bylaw, the Winchin and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 12, 2022, at 6.35 p.m. to consider the notice of intent filed by Ben Olson of Asher Construction, LLC, for proposed work within the 100-foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands at Lot 1, Doyle Avenue, Assessors Map 8, Parcel 14. The proposed work includes construction of a single-family home serviced by a driveway and a septic system within 100 feet of a wetland. Work is kept outside the 50-foot no-disturb zone. The hearing will be held on the second floor auditorium of the Town Hall, 109 Front Street, Winchin, Massachusetts, 01475. Alternative translation and accommodation, accommodation for disabled persons is available by advance request. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul Grazowitz again <laughs> for the uh, applicant, Asher Construction. No, just give me a sec second. That lot. There it is. So it's going to be right yeah. Yeah, up in there, right? It's on this the right, right hand side of Doyle. It says lot zero on this map, anyway. And there's the 2021 local photo right here. And it looks like it's all woods. <laughs> I guess it is. That's what it is, yeah. Well, let's try the 2019 and see if that has sometimes that has a clear view. There's no wetlands around there? Oh, yeah. yeah. There is. Yeah, I thought so. Um, so he bought the land on both sides of the road. Um, on this particular lot, you can see that we've got is a, a, a wetland that runs parallel with the road and uh, continues suddenly down down across the lot. So we we uh, we brought our driveway in. Um, outside, well, all of our work is outside of the 50-foot no-disturb line. So we're putting erosion controls there. We've got a driveway coming in. We're going to put a swale to pick up uh, a runoff from the driveway and the land above and bring it to a little infiltration basin that we've got down by the house. So that'll pick up all your impervious there. 
and we've got a, uh, a leach field that, uh, well, we're going with a presby because we can, we can slope those. We've got a full size, full size bed. We're not taking the, asking for any reduction on the size of that bed. Uh, the Board of Health doesn't, doesn't like a smaller leach field with those systems. So. Um, we've got erosion controls and uh, we've got, um, you know, the 100 foot, uh, a lot of our works within the 100 foot buffer. Uh, it hits a corner of the house and some of the uh, and some of the uh, system area. Paul, you mind if I just take a quick handle over your shoulder? Oh, sure. Yeah, I got an extra copy here, too. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So we're going to put erosion controls from the edge of Doyle Ave all the way down along the driveway, the basin, and wrapping it around the edge of the proposed grading on the leach field there. This one we're still waiting for a DEP number two, correct? No, no, we got one. I gave you a sheet right it, there. Yeah, it's uh, Ooh, okay. We got a number. Excellent. Uh, they did have one comment. Their comment was they wanted the delineation sheet, so I, I gave you a copy of them right there. And I emailed, also emailed you a copy of the sheets to you and. Yeah, I did see those come through. I didn't have a problem with the delineation. Approved by the board of health. So I, essentially, the, the DEP, the DEP really doesn't have any comments other than. Connor, what needs approved? What are you looking at? Forty-six feet from the diva. Yeah. Gotta go through Title Five, so. Title Five. So we've got 11 feet from the house here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got 46 feet to the reserve area here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right, it's about 47 feet. Has this been approved by the Board of Health, Paul? What's that? Has this been approved by the Board of Health? Not yet, no. No, I haven't seen it yet. What, what are you looking at? Your septic system. Yeah, the septic system is, uh, that's a 75 foot. The system is, um, about 100 feet from the wetlands. It's only, the town has a 50 foot setback, you know, same as Title V. So there's no local, there's, you're not getting any approvals on the local regulations, you're getting them under a state regulation. Well, you're talking about the wetland setback for the I'm setback. talking about your approval with the Board of Health. They do a 50 foot setback just like the state. Right. So you're not asking for any variances from the local Board of Health? No, no. Just asking for a simple approval based on state regs? Yes. Okay. And that's, that, that's fine. Okay. Um, if it was going to need any variances, I would have recommended that it would be continued until you got the variances and then you could come Yeah, back. no, we, we don't need any variances. Okay. So, I mean, I don't, if, if it meets Title V, I don't have an issue with it. it yeah, he's been very careful to optimize everything, and I actually like the fact that he's doing you know, where, where he does touch the 75 foot, it's basically vegetative structures and an infiltration basin, which is actually very helpful to this wetland system over here, especially since internal to the wetland, there is a vernal pool identified. If you look at, see the map, you see the blue dot? Yeah, that's, um, that that's actually dot. quite a bit south of where we are. Right. And that's but everything not flows. the same water flow. Then it goes across the road. Right. There. I just want to make sure that you stay away from that vernal pool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're nowhere near that. The state didn't identify it as an issue. So, you know, because if I know Judy, she saw it. So yep. she's not identifying it. It's not an issue to her. Is that a potential or certified? No, that's certified. Oh. The, the, if you look, you see the dark blue marking like that's shown on, on the MassGIS system? That's a certified pool. If it was a potential pool, it would be a hollow blue circle with just a dot in the center. The solid blue dots are certified pools. So 
so that's a certified court. We're actually quite a bit, we're north of that. Uh, you see where the abutting property line tees into our back line there. We're actually north of that. Yours is the EP number. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? I'm wondering when are you scheduled to go to the Board of Health? Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to submit it tomorrow, well, Monday. Monday? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Concerns? No, you did a good job getting that on that property. Yeah, I mean, if the commission is comfortable with the infiltration basins in the 75 foot, um, I think it would actually be an extra layer of protection to the wetland. It's a good stormwater control. I agree. So looking for a negative determination? I'm sorry, a favorable standard order. order. A favorable order of condition, I mean, a approval with a standard order of conditions. I'll approve with a standard order of conditions. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. All right, thanks, thanks Paul. Sure, you want this one too? No. Actually, Paul, you want this copy for the Board of Health? Yeah, I might as well keep that. We got a copy here in the, in the file already. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. See you later. Here's for the violation. Of, I'll, I'll get the clip. Thank you. Um, just to update the commission, um, the violation that we had in here from the nominal, the gentleman that had come in, especially from Florida because of the cutting of the trees, and you guys asked me to go out and, you know, locate replantings with him. Yep. I haven't been able to do that yet because he was sick for a while, like, at, like a few days after the meeting, and um, he's just recovering. So I tentatively have a scheduled uh, appointment with him on June 1st. Okay. Wednesday to go out and start pointing things out to plan. So Very good. I just want to let you guys know that it was he was just sick. Thank you. So what's this one? This one is 15th Wall Street. The owners are here. I'll pop that up on the map too. turn off this floodplain layer because we know that all those houses are in the floodplain. So. See that? Is this Good evening. Yes, Could you say your names to the microphone, please? Brian Leslie. Okay, what do we have, Matt? Tree so I'm going to just zoom in on this lot a little bit. So essentially, I got a report and I went out. They were basically done the job by the time I got the report and got out here. But you can see it, it's actually a very small lot to do tree cutting in. But they actually had a crane. Let's get the 2021 image. I think you'll see it a little bit better with that image. They actually came in, and I believe it was right here. The crane truck came and parked. And took this tree out and a couple of others on the property. They didn't stump anything. When they got their letter from me, they hadn't cleaned up the detritus from the cut. They actually, when they saw the cease and desist, they stopped everything. So the detritus is still there. So they left it. Um, What's still there? I called it detritus, the, the slash. Oh, okay. Yeah, so essentially we didn't clean anything up once we got the letter. Um, we weren't planning on taking the stumps out either. So What's the reason you're cutting the tree? So we had a bunch of property damage through the years. Uh, the trees, I mean, they're massive, you know, leaning over our house. Um, we have, we had to replace our roof. Um, we have pictures of that. Um, this past winter, we had one of the branches go through our hot tub cover, which destroyed the hot tub, essentially. Um, 
We've had, you know, uh, lots of uh, mildew build up on our deck. You know, we get it, we power wash it every year and it just constantly, it was just, it's just a, con it was a constant, you know, thing with these trees. So we needed, we, we needed them removed. <laughs> How many trees? Uh, there's six of them. So. so again, I would recommend doing the same thing we did with the other gentlemen that I would go down and go over replanting schedule with them. Come back to the commission with like we're doing with the other gentleman, a drawing for replantation, something that would increase the environmental and shade value for the lake, still preserve their views, and not cause a threat in another 20 years to their house at the same time. It's a tough balancing act, but I mean, he's got room in the lot. We can take care of it, you both. The, the, that hill is huge, yeah. We can definitely replant or do whatever needs to be done to rectify it. And this will involve an after effect filing fee. I'm sorry, what? This will involve an after the fact filing fee? Yes. All right, any questions or comments from the board? How many of the trees were taken down? What's that? How many trees were taken Six. down? Six. Six? Yeah. yeah. Actually, well, there's one tree that was essentially two, so we'll call it seven, but the, the tree company called it six. But Final questions or concerns? We, Matt's going to go to the property and discuss a replanting plan. And then we'll have a file the permits and do the after the fact filing yeah. um, and come back for the commission's consideration for approval. Okay, so what, you're gonna continue this? Yes. Okay. Well, so this is just a discussion, so. Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna continue it to a future meeting. You continue a discussion? It's not an agenda, I mean, it's not a. No, not I a mean, hearing. you can. We'll just put it on the next agenda. We'll put it on the next, well, I'll keep, keep it as a running item for now. I'll keep that and the other gentlemen on the agenda as old business running enforcement items so Are that you, we can keep track of those. You okay with that? Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. <coughs> really appreciate you coming forward like you yeah. did. Yeah. They responded immediately when they got the letter. So good. It was, it was really good. Good. Be, be wary because when you cut trees down around the lake, people will see. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, honestly, we weren't even aware of the buffer zone. <laughs> so I know that it's not, yeah, that's obviously, obviously we're aware of it now. So that's not an excuse or anything. You know, like I said, we want to rectify the situation however we can. So looks like your whole property is in the buffer zone. Thanks. To Thanks their for credit, coming. when I cited this stuff in the letter, they actually took the time to research it, right. to find out what buffer zone and all that meant. So good. Good. Thank you for coming. Yep. So we're going to put you on next month's agenda. Yep. June. <clears throat> June 9th. Oh, uh, so the, what did you call it? Sorry. The, basically wh what we cut down, are we allowed to remove that now? Everything, all the, uh, I'd let him take it out. It's just it's going to yep. do more harm sitting there yep. than anything else. Well, we need to condition any machinery being used around the lake. What, what, what kind of machinery do you plan to use? Uh, so we were going to use a winch to pull all that up, essentially. So, uh, so you're just going to remove what you've already cut? Yeah, yeah, we're not cutting anything else. Um, if anything, we're going to cut, you know, uh, use the wood for our fireplace, but uh, we'll just, we're going to split that once we run it up. Was that winch attached to a truck or something? Or yeah, it? yeah, attached to a truck, yeah. Because I, I wouldn't bring any construction vehicles in. No, 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 no. It's literally just going to draw be a lot of attention, and you need yeah. conditions for that work: slope, fence, erosion controls, all that. So just you're just going to use a simple winch. I'd say it's good. What about you? Okay. Line up. I see no problem. All right, appreciate it. Thank right, you. So we'll see you June 9th, 6:10 p.m. Sorry. And do I have to set up a meeting with you, Matt? Set it up with myself and Nicole in the office. Okay. Just. Yeah, email me and we'll set up a time. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. If we get any calls in the meantime, we'll uh, let them know that you came before us and it's being handled. So we're taking care of it. So we have one more item on our agenda. It's a request for a certificate of compliance with 36 Bayberry Circle. 36 Bayberry Circle is a very old order. It was a Van Dyke subdivision. The, the order of conditions was for the roadway and the stormwater. Um, it was actually written by Bob Mackey. Okay. Um, it didn't, in, it specifically excluded the lots. It would have required any lot within the buffer zone to get its own order of conditions. This lot, which is shown in the center of the screen right now, 
um, is not within the buffer zone. Um, if, you know, I actually threw a measurement up there, you can see just from edge of wetland to corner of the lot is 100 and, I believe it was 130 feet away, and average is about 130 feet away just from the lot, never mind the property. So essentially what happened was when the, when the lots were getting built, even the lots that weren't applicable to any orders or had any jurisdiction, the recorded order for the roadway wound up carrying on with the lots. So what you have is, is um, an order that shows up on this lot that's not applicable. So what I'm recommending is a certificate of compliance for lack of jurisdiction be issued. And there is a, a particular checkbox I'll check off that says not applicable to the order. Okay, that's pretty clear. Can I get a motion? I make a motion. Not applicable. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. There's only one motion left. There's one motion left. Oh, yeah? I can't to, motion to adjourn. To adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye.